So this is going to be a real quick introduction to custom dialogues. To create a custom dialogue, first we go into the editor and then we click this button, Dialog Designer. What we see here is a blank form, which is the design view of our dialogue, and of course at the moment it is empty. Up here, the most important thing is this list of objects that we can put onto the dialogue. So we have labels, edit boxes, memos, buttons, checkboxes, list boxes, combo boxes, we've got images, radio groups, progress bars, page controls, panels, splitters, and status bars. We can save the dialogue here and we've got usual cut and paste options and various alignment options for helping us to align the objects and make it look pretty. Over here on the left we have a list of the properties available for the currently selected object. At the moment that is the dialogue itself. So first of all we might want to change the title of the dialogue which appears up in the title bar and we do that with the caption property. And the other thing I want to do is to make it appear in the center of the screen. So we change position to PO screen center. And now we're going to put some objects on it. We're just going to keep this really simple to start with and we're going to ask the user for his name. So we put an edit box on. So the first thing we want to do is give the edit box a more useful name. You can see that the, the dialog designer has automatically called it edit1 because it's the first box on and it's also set the text of the edit box to edit1. So we find name and um, we'll call it edit username. And if we find the text property So we're going to blank out the, the text that appears by default by changing the text property and we'll put a label on and we'll change the caption of the label to ask for some info so that the user knows what to do with that box and we'll put a memo field on. Again we'll change the name to something useful for us. and change the text to nothing and we'll put another caption on and let's line all this up let's line them up with the, with the alignment palette with a little alignment palette which helps us to line all the left hand sides up and of course Let's not worry too much about what it looks like right now, but there's lots you can do to improve it. And we want a couple of boxes, a couple of uh, buttons. We'll have obviously a, an OK button and a cancel button. So we'll change the caption of the OK button to OK and the caption of the cancel button to cancel. Now, because this is modal, what we want to do is to have the button return a modal result value. That's the way modal forms work. What modal means is that the script will sit and wait until the dialog has been closed by the user before it continues on in the main thread. And by setting the modal result value of a button, we can, we can specify the return value of the dialog. Um, zero would mean that the, that the dialog doesn't close. 2 is usually used for cancel because it's what, it's what would get returned if the user cancels the, the dialog using the button up here or by any other means. So for the cancel button we'll set modal result to 2. So I always reserve that for cancel. And then for the OK button let's set it to 1. Anything other than 2 would do but 1 makes sense. So we can now save that. So we save to the clipboard. That means we can now close this and we can paste it into our script. So now we want some code to actually show the dialogue 
and to respond to it because all all this does is define the dialogue itself if you run the script at the moment nothing's going to happen all that is is just the um, the properties and appearance of the dialogue defined it's what that block will create the dialogue but it won't show until we use the show command so we want to specify the name of the dialogue which is dialogue one and because we want this to be modal we want a to return the modal result value so we'll call our variable that we're going to return that in modal result that could be anything you like as I said we've decided that two is going to be cancel um, and if the user closes the dialogue by any other means than pressing OK we're going to get the, va get the value of two back which is normal so what we'll say we know that when we press the OK button it's going to be one so what we'll say is if it's one we're going to do something if not so let's put an else in here if not, let's just for now just pop up a message to say that the user cancelled just so we can see what's going on. Now if the user pressed OK, presumably what we want to do is get the information that the user entered into those fields. And so we'll get those into variables and then we can do what we want with them. And the way to do that is using the get dialog property command. And as its name suggests that gets the value of a property of an object on the dialog. Now, just as a recap, if we go back in here, remember that we've got an object called edit username, and the text property is what contains the content. At the moment, it's blank. When the user enters something, that's going to have something in it. So we want to first we specify the dialog name then the object name which was edit username then the property name which was text and then we're going to give it a variable that we want the, prop the value of the property put into so I'm going to call it var username now it's sensible not to use the same name as the property or the object as the variable that we're returning to so that we don't cause confusion later var username to me makes more sense and we're going to do the same for the memo, which I think was called memo message. If we can't remember, we can either edit the dialogue again or we can have a look at the code itself. There it is there, memo message. And again, it's the text property. And we'll put it in a variable called var message. So for now, let's just display those in a message box, one for each. So we can see that it's worked. So we have our dialog definition up here. We then show the dialog modally because we have a return value. We then check that return value and if it's one we know the OK button was pressed. That's because the OK button has had the modal result value of one set to it. And we're going to get the properties of the, the, the objects so that we can, we're going to get the text properties so that we can get the data that the user entered and we can display them in a message box. If the user cancelled or did, 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 did anything other than press 1, press OK, sorry, we're going to see a message displayed that says user cancelled. So if we run that and press cancel, it does exactly what we wanted it to. If we put something in here and press OK, it's displaying, it's retrieved and displayed the data. So again, um, displaying a message box for each piece of information. So you can see that it successfully retrieved the information. So that was just a really simple example of a modal dialogue that pops up, asks the user for some information, and then returns that information to the script. Now, obviously, dialogues can be far more complicated than that. They can look whatever you want them to look like, and there are loads of objects and loads of properties, far more than we can address in one short video. There are also things called event handlers, which is a way that we can tell the script to run code when the user interacts with something on the form such as pressing a button so instead of a button closing the form like we've done here it could actually run some code when the user clicks it um, and then interact with the dialog while the dialog is still on the screen so there's an awful lot you can do but for now 
I hope that that was a good introduction and a good starting point. Next time, let's look at some more objects, some more properties. Maybe we can start looking at those event handlers. See you next time.